What's up guys? This is going to be kind of a impromptu video on uh, gifted students in a PE classroom. And in the PE classroom, you may not even know they're gifted until you see sometimes reactions. And so uh, trying to figure out who's gifted first before you get your class rosters is a big deal. And the number one thing I've noticed with gifted students is they just want to feel like they're good at something. And um, you know, obviously we have a lot of students here. So I teach at the CIC in, at, in Carthage and there's, you know, anywhere between and 700 kids one year to 800 plus kids another year. Um, and I have all of them. So we do definitely have some gifted students and across the board, it seems like if they feel like they're successful, they're into it. And sometimes if they don't feel like they're successful, they're not into it. And then you can have some behaviors come off, come off of that. So how can you get them to feel like they're successful? That's differentiation in my opinion. So every student in there is going to have different, uh, <clears throat> different levels of, like they're going to be able to be successful. Some of them, um, at a higher level quickly. So something like, uh, using a striking unit with hockey. I have noticed when we do striking with hockey sticks, this, the, uh, Ability levels are all similar in nature because not a lot of kids play hockey here in Carthage. But if we're playing soccer, it's a huge disparity in skill levels. So that's a difficult thing to teach soccer because of that. Because some of them feel like I'm not very successful because they have eyes and they watch around the room and they notice that they're not as successful as their peers in some of these skills. So, and I'm not saying we dumb down the material or anything like that. Just start very basic and give them different ways to be successful. So for instance, give them stations and let them choose which station they want to go to. And you could have several stations. And so the ones that are they're like kicking soccer goals um, outside, maybe you have some stations outside. If you have a co-teacher and you're teaching with a big school like I'm in, we, we're able to go outside and inside. So maybe we have some where the competitive natured kids are able to go and get that release out there. Um, and some of those stations like kicking soccer goals, kicking against one another, and you teach those skills first, maybe you do little short GIF videos showing the skill and you have it on a tablet sitting by the goal so they can play the GIF or GIF, however you call that, and they can see what the cues are in the, in the GIF and you can have those at these stations. So you're not having to go around and teach the stations and oh snap, we don't have any time for class left. I felt like that was the best way to do stations. And when you do stations and you give them choice, your differentiation kind of takes care of itself when it comes to that. And we could be talking about gifted students. We could be talking about students with special needs. We could be talking about students with um, a language barrier. Any of that, when you're doing stations, it really helps. Also let them choose partners. Um, with a caveat there. So sometimes you let them, ch I, I always say, um, cause this is also can affect how they feel successful because they're, anytime they choose partners, they, some of them feel like, yes, I get to choose somebody around my skill level and somebody I'm comfortable around. And others are like, uh Oh, we're going to have to choose partners and nobody's going to choose me. So I tell them, if you would like to come up to me and I'll help you find partners, you're welcome to do that. And I always have at least five or six do that. And the others will find their own partner. That way it's, it's open for them to feel safe and come up to me and then I can hook them up with some partners. And sometimes I'll have them find a partner and then I'll take another two and I'll put them together as a four. So they got to choose a partner in that group and then, um, but I'm still kind of in control of who's with whom. And that working with gifted students when it comes to working with other kids is, a, is an important aspect of that as well. So partner work, Working with stations, um, helping those students feel successful. And so that could look different in different different areas that you're teaching, you know. So I gave you the hockey one is that's the easiest because they're all in the same skill level. So you can it's easier to differentiate when everybody's on the same skill level, but when they're all in different skill levels, you've got to give them choice and give them different places to learn the standard that you're teaching. So if it's uh, if the standard is you know, let's kind of use this as a, instead of reading the standard regurgitated back, but it could just be using your body to kick. And uh, so kicking a ball with accuracy, um, 
there are several ways to do that at different stations. You could do cones, um, you could do like cone drills where they're individual by themselves. You could do partner work. Um, you could do partner passing on grass where it's slower. It slows the ball down so they're more successful instead of on your gym floor. So try to do that unit in the time of year where you can be outside. Um, yeah, and then at the end of the class, check in with them. Give them a self-assessment and see if you feel like, if you can notice that they felt successful. So to wrap this up, as they're leaving the classroom, do you feel like they feel like they're successful? And if not, re reassess that, you know? Um, reflect on what happened in that class, plan for the next time, do, a diff do the class a little bit differently next time that you think you need to, and then reassess again and see if your differentiation is better with those students. Um, so self-assess, the way I do that, I do a fist to five or I'll do, you know, let's just do fist to five here. So fist is, a five is they feel like they could teach another student how to do that skill. So, and then four would be like they think they did it really well but not comfortable enough necessarily to teach it to other students. And then three, you know, they felt like they did it pretty well most of the time but they were still having to think about the skill as they're doing it. And I, I try to tell them this stuff, and then obviously we go down two, one, zero from there. I don't usually have to meet two ones or zeros, but sometimes you do if the skill is difficult for them and it wasn't differentiated well enough. So if you're teaching the same skill and making them all do the exact same thing the whole time, that's the opposite of differentiation. But if you give them the standard, what they need to learn, and you give them options of how to go learn that on their own, you'll see kids learn it faster by doing it in their own, their own way. Um, so that's all I have for you today. Uh, if you have any, I, I know I was asked to do this because differentiation looks different in the PE space, but I mean, really, well, I taught a classroom, I taught science before, and I did it very similarly in my science classroom. I give the kids choice and options, and I always self-assess. Every class, I need to know, I need to know what they think, how they feel, because how they feel usually tells me either their confidence level, because sometimes I think, oh, you're doing better than that, but their confidence is like a three, but I think they're a four or five. And so their confidence will oftentimes tell you how well they'll learn something, because if they're confident, they'll, they'll eventually do it. And you gain confidence by doing, so let them do whatever it is they're trying to learn. That's all I have for you. Thank you.